If you run an agency, this video is for you. If you run an Amazon brand, you may also find value in this if you're doing some customer service. My name is Stephen Pope. I'm the founder of My Amazon Guy. And in this video, I'm gonna be talking about client surveys. I'm actually gonna reveal my actual client survey that I give out to my own clients. And I've been doing this for a consecutive 12 quarters. I've barely edited this survey in the last three years, and it's very stable. The reason a client survey is so critical is if you don't ask some basic questions about how you are doing as an agency, how you are doing in customer service and all of the metrics, you will never know how the client feels about you. Because when you get onto those weekly calls or bi-weekly calls, whatever you do with your, your brands and clients, they are not going to give you this feedback until the end of your tenure together. For example, if they're thinking about switching agencies, they ain't going to signal that most of the time. Most of the time, they're just going to go shop it and then one day send you a cancellation and it will surprise you. So I force my clients to fill this out begrudgingly sometimes, in fact, and I tell my own team members that I want them to complete at least 80% every single quarter. And my survey is not easy to complete. Here is the new thing I added. I agree to extend my contract 90 days and skip filling out the survey. Now, the reason I did this is because we've had certain brands that we've worked with for so long, they don't really have any new feedback for us. But that's not really why I think this is clever. The reason I think this is so clever is because of the concept of micro conversion. That if you can get somebody to say yes to a small thing, they'll say yes to a bigger thing. And what I have found, even though this technically doesn't actually extend the contract legally, it does mentally. And I believe that a micro conversion, it helps the client commit to us. Now, some of you might say, well, 90 days, that's a short time period, and, and you would be correct. But in my field, in the agency field especially, and in the Amazon agency field, it is very immature. It's not like Google agency land where there's some big players, it's all consolidated, and, and of course there's boutiques everywhere, but there's a lot of, you know, switching agencies going on. There's a lot of coming and going. But I'm also very open about how fast I'm growing. And if you go to myguy.agency slash case, you can see a case study on how I got my agency agency to 20 million ARR. And I go into great detail. I show all of my revenue and metrics and everything that we've been doing. And it's been a phenomenal ride. For me to be able to be at 400 brands with a high churn model, that tells you I'm really freaking good at sales. But in addition to that, it also is symptomatic of the industry and what is experience. There's a lot of native born brands. These brands that go over to amazon.com, they pop up and they disappear. They pop up, do really well on Amazon, but can't go to other platforms. They fail on Walmart. They fail on their own ecommerce.com website. They only do good on Amazon. You know, well over 40% of the brands that stop working with us are due to financial reasons. I know that our clients are likely to cancel at any given moment. I am trying to find ways to prevent that. And I'm very happy with my model. I'm very comfortable with a high churn model, but I keep coming up with ideas on how to tweak it make that 1% improvement, so to speak. And this was my clever idea that I came up with this month. And that was to add a micro commitment. I agree to extend my contract for 90 days and skip filling out the survey. And my thought process here is that if a client will do that, they will be happier with us. And if they can't make that micro commitment, we force them to tell us why they can't. And it also helps the, the brand manager who's over that account know that, hey, I'm not even prepared to extend 90 days. That means, we got to work harder and we got to earn their business. First question, how would you rate your overall experience with my Amazon guy? Now I dictated this one with a star rating scenario because that's kind of similar to how you would rate a product on Amazon. So if you go over to amazon.com right now, you can clearly see 4.3 out of five stars here. And my thought process was the consumers are very used to selecting stars like this. So I wanted to have it kind of tie into the Amazon platform. It's the only question I have in this format with five stars. 
stars, identify who your director is, who your brand manager is. This just helps us know who the survey is about. Sometimes we switch brands from one brand manager to another for various reasons. Maybe we have too many on one brand manager and just need to equalize it. Or maybe there's another reason why we might swap things up. We identify who they are. Very important for long-term data collection is filtering. How would you rate your satisfaction with your brand manager? We generally see high marks on this, but in cases where we see a score of six or under, we're gonna take some aggressive action on that and flat out ask the brand if they wanna swap brand managers. Sometimes we can have a great brand manager, but it's just not a fit. If I put a hyper extroverted brand manager with a hyper introverted client, that communication stream is gonna not work out so well. The extrovert wants to talk on the phone all day. The introvert just wants to type some messages and never get on the phone. So we might realign that. And I've tried to use culture index and some other techniques to kind of get that uh, assignment right from the get-go. But an agency land, sometimes it's just who's ever available. My brand manager gets on base, activity that matters, right? So this is a good measurement to know whether they're acting on the right activities. For example, if you have a meeting with the brand manager and they commit to you or tell you we're gonna do something and then they, and they never fall through on it, we're probably gonna get a no on that and we're gonna wanna know more information about that. My brand manager is a strategic. So we typically hire strategic brand managers. They're our quarterback. They're the ones throwing the plays. I've already built the playbook and to use a football metaphor, I've built the whole book of plays that can be run. We're actually gonna go to market and sell our brand brand manager playbook, probably for about 297 sometime in the next 30 days. So be on the lookout for that. And it's a great playbook that could help a brand or an agency figure out like where to focus and what has the most impact to drive sales. So we hire people that are strategic. We focus in on trying to make the client feel like we're strategic. It's a key part of our success and measurement. My brand manager has attention to detail. So we ask this question because if we're sending bad deliverables, they're going to mark no, they're going to tell us uh, things aren't accurate. We know that accuracy is so important. So we hire lots of highly detailed people. And if accuracy ever comes under fire, we know that's one of the fastest ways a client's going to fire us. So we ask that question. I would like to keep my brand manager or switch to a new brand manager. Bluntly asking if somebody wants to switch to a new brand manager is also a form of a micro commitment. I would say every quarter we get one to three of these requests. So out of 400 brands, two of them are asking for a brand manager swap every quarter. It's actually a pretty good metric in my opinion. And that helps us know that like, hey, they like Mag, they just wanna try a different brand manager out and whatnot. Instead of it just being all about the brand manager, we wanna know how's the design team doing? How's the PPC team doing? How is the catalog team doing? Merchandising team. And so we're gonna give independent ratings and I got to tell you, I never see all tens. I usually see like three of them do really well. And then one department is the focus area. So the benefit of asking these questions to clients is to figure out which department they feel needs the most focus right now, which one is struggling the most. So is it the design or is it the PPC? And even if the brand manager directly asks on a client meeting, they may not know how to tell us. By simply asking and separating these questions out, we get scores that indict our bad areas and reward our good. These are things like our, we're promising during the sales process. Everybody hires us to grow sales. Almost nobody hires us to just maintain things. Now, some do, but almost nobody. So we know if we don't grow somebody's sales, it's very unlikely we're gonna have somebody stick around for years to come. So we wanna know. Do you feel like we are meeting your expectations on growing sales? Communication speed. We know that if we don't turn around every piece of communication within one business day, it upsets our clients. Certain brand managers who may be slower to respond, maybe they get bogged down on a particular account. I got dancing going on now. And that can be a challenge. And so we want to know like how fast our turnaround speed is. And in general, it's always good to be faster than the client, right? So if the client is slow, but you're slow plus one, you're doing okay. Match their pace or do slightly better, typically doing okay. The brand manager might be strategic and they might like them, but they may think mag is not strategic. And so there could be a delineation there. Sometimes asking the same question with a little bit different flavor, will get a different result. And peace of mind. Amazon, super chaotic. Agencies, super chaotic. It's very difficult to sell on Amazon. It's even more difficult to run an agency because you're dealing with all of the difficulties and complexities of Amazon plus, 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 plus. The amount of people 
people. We manage at MAG, 500 people, so peace of mind. And this is three questions you should be asking all the time. What should MAG stop doing, start doing, and do more of? And I'm telling you, this is the best place to get feedback. Somebody could give me all 10 marks, and if we didn't ask these open-ended questions, we wouldn't learn what still we could do more. This is a great place for us to find out what's pissing them off. And so one thing that came up on our last survey is that they didn't like the fact that we sent shipping recommendations every single week. What? That's something super valuable. Everybody needs shipping recommendations, right? Don't like it. And they think it's a waste of resources, a noise. They disregard it. They don't act on that information. And so we would see that show up in the stop doing section all the time. And so when somebody told us to stop doing it, we stopped doing it and the client was happier, right? So when you ask for things and then actually deliver on those client survey results for things they ask, it makes the client even happier. So they could give us all 10 marks, but say stop doing one thing and we stop doing shipping recommendations or whatever it might be and their increase in satisfaction. I wish MAG would do more of something. So this is a way for us to get some accolades. They're like, man, I really love what you're doing with A plus content. I really love what you're doing with PPC. I wish you would do more of that. And we see all kinds of very unique feedback that comes in. And then I wish MAG would start doing this. So something we, we've seen a lot of recently is TikTok, Walmart, March and on and those sort of opportunities pop up clients really want us to expand service what is one thing in our sales process that we deliver to your satisfaction so this is a way for us to get a micro satisfaction out of them so hey you told me you were gonna grow sales you did it. You told me that the experience that I would have with MAG would be the same experience during the sales process. You did it. The way that MAG works is the same as Steven talks about in his videos. Those are things I love hearing and we hear them frequently. What is one thing we didn't deliver? And the number one thing we hear, you didn't grow my sales because we can't grow those sales for every single brand. We try our best, but sometimes the product's just not up to stuff. And then sometimes there might be a miscommunication or an assumption made during the sales process. We have a very short sales process. A lot of competing agencies are a lot more thorough right? I love one call closes. We seek those out all the time. And those clients generally do very well with us. But in one call, you can't cover everything. I like to explain this as it relates to Amazon, right? So Amazon's changing all the time. Agencies are changing all the time. And what the client tells you they want during the sales process could be completely different from what they actually want 90 days from now. And so when I first started out my agency, you know, as a boutique, as a consultant, I really had, I had like a one page contract because I knew it didn't matter what they committed to. They would change their mind. 30, 60, 90 days later. Today, we have a way more sophisticated contract. I had to grow up and be a big boy and put the unfortunate men's suit pants on of, of corporate world, but I still have a distaste for it. <laughs> so I, I did it because it's necessary because I want to go upstream and work with bigger brands and work with the corporations who expect that kind of thing. And it scares away the small small guy a little bit, but you know we try and, try and work through it. In any case, we need to know if there was a promise unfulfilled and we, we asked that question. And then finally, any additional comments or feedback, generally don't get a whole lot from this. I think that my favorite three questions, the start, stop, more, generates the most actionable feedback. And then you know, if they fill that out, we're very happy. Finally, I just like to reinforce the brand, throw my own picture in there. We got Mag's logo at the top. Our leadership team, personally reads these. I used to read them all myself. I've had to delegate a little bit of that. So I, I used to have that wording that Stephen Pope reads them all personally. I'm aware of them all personally, but I generally have somebody flag the ones that I need to read at this point. So I adjusted that to you know general leadership. We want to make sure we're following through on everything. I have a lot of tools like this as part of one of the programs I have over at myguy.agency. We sell SOPs specifically for agencies. We also sell SOPs specifically for Amazon. Amazon brands. And so number one question I get is like, hey, does the agency SOPs also include the Amazon SOPs? And the answer is no, they're separate programs. So you can see, you know, what we sell, 2,000 bucks to get our agency operation SOPs, 10 grand to get my sales process. And I spent millions of dollars building that out. That's why there's a 10K price point there. And then you can also buy Amazon SOPs from us by going to myamazonguy.com slash SOP. And these ones are a little bit cheaper. It's only a thousand bucks for this to get a subscription access or 2,500 for a lifetime. Lots of SOPs, 450 Amazon based SOPs. You can see a lot of good feedback we're getting for these agency SOPs as well. What got me to six, seven, now eight figures as a company and as a brand.